I think in, in uh, almost every society, uh, artists look for space. They look for cheap space. They look for unused factories or warehouses. And so Beijing was no different. And so where we are right now is a place called Da Shanzi. And 20 years ago, when I first moved to Beijing, Da Shanzi was considered the way far away suburbs. It was way far away from the central business district at the time. It was a time when there was still uh, no third ring road or fourth ring road. Um, and so this was, you know, in the outskirts of town. So artists naturally came to this space um, and uh, for their workshops because the rent was cheap. Uh, the factory that was here uh, wasn't doing much in terms of producing its own goods. There is a place called 797, which abuts 798. 797 still makes speakers, really cool speaker systems. Because the whole area, the whole 797, 798, 799 area, was a huge electronics factory that was built during the mid-50s. Um, and then you can still see remains of the Cultural Revolution here. When we go downstairs, you'll see the old Biaoyu, the old slogans from the Cultural Revolution are still on the walls. And so artists were here, and again, as happens in a lot of places, whether it's San Francisco or Boston or Beijing, places where artists come, then generally there's going to be a following. There's going to be a gentrification of the area. And so that's what you have here in 798. Uh, the rent started increasing. Artists could no longer afford to live here because other people moved in. Galleries moved in. Restaurants, uh, you know, very trendy clubs started moving in because it was where the artists were coming. It was the happening place. And when I moved in here, I moved in here as my loft, uh, I was and I think I remain maybe the only person who actually lives here. Um, and so, you know, the, the space has changed, the neighborhood has, has changed, and in certain respects I have changed also. So, why new media? Well, it was a very easy segue for me going from uh, being a intellectual property lawyer, being Microsoft's piracy czar, I wanted to enter the art field. But I know nothing about traditional art forms. I know nothing about oil painting or sculpture in general. But I do know about technology. And having worked at Microsoft, I had a terrific opportunity to work with engineers, computer engineers, software engineers, in the Microsoft research labs. And I could see from them that there was this very strong and uh, exciting creative urge that they had. Um, and so I thought, well, if I'm going to go into the art field, the field that makes the most sense to me is to go into new media art where people uh, are really trying to find that meeting place between technology and art. So all of the art that I display here all has a very strong technological component to it, whether it's in video form or, uh, as you'll see the exhibit now, it's all being created in a computer. So there's a very strong digital element to it, a very strong technological element to it, but also at the same time, uh, it's art. If you do a Google search for new media in Beijing, uh, the Yuanfen New Media Art Space generally comes up at the very top or the second at the most. So uh, artists who are in the field of new media art walk in here, find me, contact me through email, uh, know about me through some of the social networking sites. And so when they come and they meet me, I see whether, uh, really whether I like their art, whether I think they're doing things that are interesting and challenging, whether I think they're doing things that are uh, cutting edge and a little bit dangerous.
So I, uh, you know, meet these artists, they come in, I meet them, um, and those that I really like and whose artwork I really like, I exhibit. Well, I've always been interested in creativity. Um, so as a child, I was always, you know, moving furniture around my room and painting walls and doing that kind of thing, but I, uh, I wasn't really good at being an artist. I couldn't draw or paint, but I had those kinds of great art teachers who were very encouraging telling me that, you know, creativity can come everywhere. So even when I was in law school, I studied uh, intellectual property law. That was my my main focus, and so I uh, got to work with a terrific guy named Mevel Nimmer, uh, and every lawyer knows Mevel Nimmer because he wrote the definitive treatise on uh, American copyright law called Nimmer on Copyright. So I got to bring my creative interests into everything I did. I brought it into my practice of law. I got to bring it into Microsoft when I was their general counsel and when I was the piracy czar. And then, um, a year and a half ago, when I decided to leave Microsoft, I thought, wow, you know, what, what new creative thing can I do now? Well, in that time, the five years that I had lived in this space, the world around me changed, and 798 had become... Uh, the center of Chinese contemporary art. So I thought, well, why don't I really take the plunge? And so I opened up a gallery called Yuan Fen. And uh, what kind of gallery? Well, it's new media, uh, what we call new media art. And what that is is a very intellectual property intensive form of art. So Although when you hear that I went from being a corporate exec at Microsoft and that I had been a corporate lawyer into being now someone who runs a gallery, it sounds like there's lots of changes. In fact, the consistent thread through all of it has been creativity and what I could do with creativity. So that's why I opened up a gallery. Now, why Yuan Fen? Well, yuan fen is a word that we often translate into Chinese as being, uh, or into English as being uh, destiny or fate. But yuan fen actually comes from a Taoist concept of the cosmos that looks at the cosmos like a piece of cloth with a warp and a woof. And along those threads of cloth run people's lives and time and events. And when the warp and the woof meet, that's where yuan fen happens. That's where destiny happens or serendipity. So six years ago, when I moved into this space, it was a completely disused factory. The windows were all broken. There was nothing but junk on the floor. It took me three weeks to clear everything out. And when I cleared everything out, there were two pieces of original equipment that you'll see. One of them is a scale that was made in East Germany. And the other piece of equipment was a potter's wheel. And here I was in a factory, and there's a potter's wheel. And what was my first entry into China? It was a ceramics class. So I thought, wow, this is really yuan fen. Somehow me and this place have met.